What's up, everybody? So I'm on my way to do a recall for my Lexus, but I'm actually driving this car over there. I just wanted to do the schedule, the appointment for that. But I don't know if you guys have heard about all the airbag recalls, but that's basically what I'm going to schedule an appointment for. And I thought I'd do this video on the way there. And so a bunch of you have been asking me about, um, or to do videos on what I do besides, you know, the cars and um, the businesses I run or the businesses I have run and talk about that stuff a bit. So that's what I'm basically gonna do this video about. This week I actually had a meeting on thinking about buying another business. So if you guys watched my previous videos or one of my previous videos, which was titled like what I do for a living and um, how I'm able to afford a car like this and everything, I basically talk about the fact that I did own a business and I haven't ended up selling it. And um, if you're aware of that video, you know that it was a restaurant. So I'm actually looking into another restaurant business and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of information on what I'm considering and what I'm looking at when considering that business. And what when I went to the meeting for that business and uh, what questions I was asking and what are the factors that would impact my decision on buying that business. So, and then by the way, I never went to uh, business school. I don't have an MBA. Um, my business experience is limited to basically being an owner of a business. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, and that's all I want to say. Uh, it's like a little disclaimer before starting this video. So here we go. So first thing first, um, you know, the person is going to give you a value on the business. You're going to go to to meet with the person. They're going to be like, I'm expecting X amount of money for this business. So for this example, we'll say $100,000. Now, you want to know, well, it's like $100,000. What makes the business worth $100,000? So you want to know how much this business is making, what its overhead is, um, you know, what kind of risks you're going to take when purchasing a business. So... One thing you wanna know right away is the overhead. If you have a business, um, it's gonna have an overhead, which is the cost of running the business. How much do you need to make each month to have this business basically not be in the red? So let's say we have a $100,000 business. They're asking, or they're asking for $100,000. Um, they say the business makes $15,000 a month. And in the business, they say that there's equipment with a value of $50,000. So right there, when you buy the business, if you paid $100,000 and it failed the next day, you would lose $50,000 because you'd be able to flip the equipment for $50,000. Now, where did the other $50,000 come from? It's basically the value in the business, that the fact that it makes money, so that it's in the black. So in the black means it's profiting, in the red means it's basically losing money. Um, so now say the person tells you, it's $15,000 a month, it's making $15,000 a month, and of that, there's $10,000 overhead and there's $5,000 profit. You wanna ask yourself, or ask that person, well, where's that overhead coming from? Because you wanna have an idea of, well, is this business, um, is that overhead stable, or is it kind of like a number that could be fluctuating all the time? Now, what usually makes up an overhead for a business is gonna be your rent, your employee costs, um, you know, insurance on those employees, uh, you know, payroll, all that. Then you're gonna have like PG and E, um, merchant vendor costs. Uh, you're gonna have your point of sales systems costs. So every time you swipe a credit card, you know how much is that costing that person per month? Do they have a contract with that uh, company? Is that th something you're gonna have to keep? So those are all things to consider. So now say that you have a $10,000 overhead. You've established that this $10,000 overhead is pretty stable. Now. With the business, like I said, there's the PG&E cost, um, and I'm gonna give you an example of an overhead that it's not stable. So for my last business, I'll give you guys the actual numbers for that. I had a 2,500 square foot business, and my PG&E could be anywhere from $1,600 a month upwards of $3,000 a month. So that's something you need to keep in mind when considering a business, and most likely, um, you wanna ask, for, so for things like that, you wanna ask for paperwork for 12 months because pg and &E is something that fluctuates usually month to month, and uh, in the summer it's usually higher, in the winter it's lower, rates differ and all that. So those are all things you wanna see. You wanna see paperwork, detailed paperwork on how much the business is making, um, and how this person's claiming that, you know, it has a $10,000 overhead and you're making $5,000 a month. 
So all that's to consider. And then another unstable piece of the uh, overhead is employee costs. So if your business increases, you know, you're obviously gonna need more employees, employee cost is gonna go up, etc. Now, another thing is inventory. Inventory is gonna differ as well. It's not gonna be a stable cost. So of that $10,000, say he's paying $2,000 inventory, making $15,000 a month, if you go up to making twenty thousand dollars a month, obviously your inventory is going to probably increase in value. Say, with uh, fifteen thousand dollars a month, you know you're going up twenty five percent there. Then your inventory cost will most likely go up twenty five percent. Twenty five percent of, you know, two thousand dollars is what uh, you're looking at, like an extra four hundred and fifty bucks or so. So you say now your new inventory cost is twenty five hundred dollars per month for the overhead. So that's all to consider. Um, then a really, really important thing is when going into a business is you want to know about things like lease agreements. So he's told you now that um, for this $100,000 business, part of the overhead is a $2,000 a month rent. And that helps make up that $10,000 overhead. That could change if you know the lease agreement is going to change uh, when you become the new owner. And how long is that lease agreement? Say your business is successful and you only have a two-year lease agreement, then the land or the... Uh, the owner of that property could go easily go ahead and be like, well, you know what, I'm gonna raise rent this much, and now you're kind of stuck in that position. It's like, do I move a successful business, or do I just kind of bite it and I have to increase, uh, you know, manage this increase in rent and factor it into my overhead. So that's another thing to consider. One thing I, I consider too is you wanna make sure that this person is all up to date on their payments. So, you know, they could be behind with PG&E, say, or they could be behind with merchant contracts. So, for example, um, in a food business, it would be like Restaurant Depot, um, US Foods, all that. So, um, that's something to consider. Those are the things that I would consider when looking into a business. Like I said, the overhead and the cost and what my risk is. Could I easily increase the cost of going from, um, gonna go ahead and silence that for right now. But could I easily increase uh, that $5,000 a month profit to say $7,000 a month? Or could I increase it to you know $8,000 a month? What would it take? Would I need to you know put a huge, or dump a huge amount of money into it? Um, would I be losing more money? All that. So those are things to consider. Um, it's stuff that I consider when I look into a business and it's stuff that I'm actually looking at currently when uh, debating about whether or not to buy this business. So I just wanna do a quick video on that, talk about you know, the things that I do look at. There's some things I probably missed and there's not just a general formula as to whether a business is a good buy or not. It's more of like, you know, there's a lot of other factors, location, etc. cetera. Um, does that person currently advertise? You know, if you had an advertisement budget, could you increase sales easily? All those things come into factors or are factors when it comes to buying a business and considering whether this business can be profitable or not. So um, as much as like, I wish I could just, you know, lay it out outright and just make it super easy like there's this formula you follow and you know there's gonna be a successful business um, if they're you know if you follow that formula it's not the case and if it was the case you know everyone would be opening businesses left and right but those are just some general things you can follow that can help you up uh, set you up for success and you know help you avoid basically taking a huge risk on something and losing a ton of money when uh, considering about or like considering opening a business or buying one so that's all I really wanted to cover for this week, um, or at least in this video. I'm actually gonna try and release another video maybe in the next couple days here because I started charging the Mustang battery. Um, if you guys are following me, then and you've seen my other videos, you've seen or you've heard me talk about that, the fact that I have a 67 Mustang and I wanted to kind of make it a project car. So I finally started um, getting like cleaning it up and hopefully I'm gonna turn it over in the next few days here. And I have someone who's gonna help me work on it. I have all the tools to do whatever with it. And maybe if you guys have some suggestions as to what I should do with it, um, go ahead and throw it in the comments. And as always, I just wanna say thanks for following and uh, watching the video. And if you liked what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. Legendary. Where are you?